All Might, the world's number one hero who is so powerful that any city's crime rate is known to plummet from his mere presence. Having been going for some 40 years, in his prime, All Might was easily able to punch hard enough to cause shockwaves to propagate across the air to destabilize and then explode sets of small missiles some 50 to 100 feet or 15 to 30 meters away. If we use the measurements for a standard RPG-7 missile, that travels at speeds of nearly 300 meters a second or 670 miles per hour, All Might would roughly be causing wind speeds of something like 70 kilometers or 100 miles an hour to veer these things so hard that they turn around and explode, if not more. We also see All Might flat out punch what is known as the Tokyo Sky Egg, demolishing the 500 meter tall building supporting the egg into dust, dropping down to the ground below, bulldozing the surrounding streets and a nearby forest in an area large enough to fit a large stadium, while gathering every single surrounding animal in his arms, rushing them all to safety. As he then jumps up to catch the still falling sky egg, setting it softly down on the cleared ground. A feat that is even more impressive once you realize that the sky egg is a combination of Tokyo's real life Tokyo sky tree and the massive Tokyo dome or bird egg. With the sky egg teetering at the top of this tower, having a capacity of up to 50,000 people. And seeing how a raging party for the superhero known as Captain Celebrity was going on at the very moment of the building's collapse, All Might could very well be lifting a hypothetical 500,000 tons of weight, if not a little more, which I had to calculate and skill twice because I didn't believe the sheer capacity of this thing. During the start of the series, we see that instead of flying, All Might is just so powerful that he can appear to fly leaping across entire cities with a single jump. Where after having a horrifying sludge monster who likes to take over people's bodies turned loose, All Might saves Bakugo and Izuku, punching the villain so hard that he creates a tornado and turns what was just a blue sky into rain clouds. Meaning that at the very least, All Might's smash is so powerful as to expel the city's warm air upwards high into the sky, quickly forming clouds and creating an area of low pressure below. Or basically Basically, this dude can control the weather via punching the frickin' wind. So it's not much of a surprise that we see All Might casually flatten a large 400 pound or 180 kilogram refrigerator like he's leaning into a piece of jello, pushing the thing down so hard that he explodes the massive trash heap behind him. When the school comes under attack at the USJ training facility, a rather ticked off All Might smashes through the doors, showing his insane speed as he leaps across the Disneyland size facility, wiping out villains so fast that no one can even see him. And later we see All Might in order to once again save the school's students, travel a distance of 5 kilometers in about 30 seconds, giving him a speed of 600 kilometers or 372 miles an hour, which is said to be slow from when he was in his prime. However, in every instance, for All Might to be moving faster than the eye can see means that he would have to be moving across some someone's field of view in less than 0.1 seconds. And at the USJ training facility, All Might then fights against a bioengineered monster made from the body of a deceased human that was bioengineered with multiple superpowers included to specifically take him down. And it's here that we see All Might blast off some 300 punches in around 30 seconds, right before he punches the Nomu so hard that he causes the entire facility to shake from sending it through the wall as the Nomu flies somewhere into the literal stratosphere or otherwise somewhere at minimum that's 11 kilometers or nearly 7 miles upwards. Later during a training exercise of teachers versus students, we see All Might and all of the teachers wearing weights that equal half of their body weight in total. And seeing how All Might weighs 255 kilograms or 562 pounds, half of that weight seems pretty light for a guy who forms hurricanes just by stomping. A point that has made Chris are clear when All Might opens up his fight against his two opponents by throwing a punch that flies through UA's makeshift city streets from something like half a mile or 0.8 kilometers away, cutting through cars, concrete bridges, and destroying concrete buildings like they're made out of Swiss cheese, making All Might's I'm about to mess my students up punch akin to a high-end Category 5 hurricane, one that has wind speeds of well over a couple hundred miles or few hundred kilometers an hour to do this 
sort of damage. Eventually, after smashing through more buildings, All Might comes back into contact with his main villain, who is well over a hundred years old, known as All For One. A villain who has the power to steal powers or quarks and transfer them if he doesn't use them for himself. During All Might's last battle as the world symbol of peace, he and All For One hit each other hard enough to completely level the surrounding 15 city blocks or so, or otherwise an area of one square mile or 2.5 square kilometers. That possibly grows in size over the course of the fight. With All Might punching the villain hard enough to otherwise create what we could call a massive F5 tornado. Being the category that's capable of carrying 500 ton concrete blocks, as we see all the smashed buildings circling around this darn thing. As All Might with his greatest attack leaves All for One in a nice nuclear sized crater. A really interesting point we see in the series is All Might also passes his specific power or quirk known as One for All onto the series main protagonist Izuku. One for All is said to be a stockpiling quirk that is theorized to work by slowly siphoning off some of its users day to day energy or latent energy in the environment over time that the user can access, significantly augmenting their physical strength at any moment. And unlike other quirks, One for All was initially combined with a quirk inside All for One's younger brother, a quirk that allows it to be transferred over the years to the following generations, via them swallowing a piece of the current user's DNA who wills the successful transfer of the quirk. As we see Izuku swallowing a piece of All Might's hair with the 7 foot 3 or 220 centimeter titan giving Izuku his blessing. Interestingly, when the quirk is somewhat hereditarily passed on, latching on to the very DNA, the genes of the new user, otherwise causing a mass genetic rewrite or mutation to occur, all of One for All's previous stored up energy also passes on to the new user through a strand of hair, which has allowed this quirk to bulk up significantly in its power over the generations, as if it's shoving all that power away in some sort of personal pocket dimension or hammer space. We also see that some of the previous users' memories, the electrical impulses or energy from their very thoughts, also get stored by One for All, and passed on as well, leaving a shade of them behind inside the quirk. But as unstoppable as All Might and One for All are, he does have a major limitation and weakness. Similar to my weakness to spending way too much time trying to find one scene or make one calculation that just perfectly fits two seconds of the video, despite All Might's nearly unstoppable power as the eighth user of One for All, All Might is capable of being severely injured by other extremely powerful quirks. Given that during his time in the spotlight, there weren't too many other quirks that had evolved enough to pose a match for One for All. Yet All Might took a catastrophic injury from All for One that made it so he could only maintain what then became his muscled form for just three hours a day, where he would then start bleeding from the mouth and be forced to change back completely exhausted. But if none of this was very interesting, then I saved one interesting fact for last. After All Might took his massive injury, his eyes faded from white to black, and much like his protege, All Might was born quirkless, with one for all's past wielders noting that if the quirk was to be passed on to someone who already had a power, their lifespan would be considerably shortened, as if they were adding water to an already filled glass, rather than giving it to someone whose glass was already empty, who could then use one for all's full potential. With us going over the absurd feats and abilities of other popular characters in these videos available right here. See you in the next one.